Hello everyone and welcome to this video on installing the Gravity Kubernetes operator in your cluster, regardless of where that K8's cluster lives. This could be for EKS, it could be for AKS, um, in Azure Cloud, it could be in your local Minikube cluster, which is actually what I'm going to be working through today. Now, your Kubernetes operator is going to be used here to bring all of the API management capabilities to a K8 native environment. And so what do we mean by that? Well, you can build your YAML files and your custom resource definitions, uh, ultimately to push, update, um, and modify APIs on your Gravity control plane. Whether that be the SaaS control plane running in the cloud and managed by Gravity, or your locally managed uh, control plane. Regardless, we're giving you a way to um, update all of your API definitions, regardless of whatever protocol they may be in a Kubernetes fashion. So let's go ahead and show you exactly what that installation process looks like. Uh, and again, just to kind of reiterate, we have uh, all sorts of documentation here that walk you through exactly how to install um, and do everything that I'm going to be doing in this video. I also have um, a blog that I would love to share. It's going to be included in the description of the video below um, for some more advanced use cases that are looking to uh, embed the GKO in your API operations um, and CICD pipelines. So if you're interested in automation, which I'm sure you are if we're talking Kubernetes, this is going to be a very useful blog for you. All right, so let's jump right into it. We have our SaaS control plane here, and this is a control plane that is managed by Gravity Cloud. And we also have our APIM console, which is what we're going to be using as the UI perspective um, alongside the, the operator to build all of our APIs um, and integrations directly here. So rather than build these API definitions in the console, I'm going to be using the operator um, altogether. So again, to reiterate, you're going to be following this documentation. I'll also include a link to this uh, document specifically, as well as this blog. And as long as you follow these steps here, you're going to have all of the pieces uh, that you may want. So let's jump into my local repository. And I'll show you exactly um, the two pieces or two key pieces of um, pages that we're going to be looking at. So our management context is telling our operator, once we install that, how to interact with our control plane. And so uh, on top of kind of the uh, bureaucratic elements that we have to include here, such as your API version, uh, the, the kind specific to what we're installing in our case cluster, and which in this case is the management context, and then the metadata, which of course we can name whatever we would like, we're telling the operator which control plane isolated from our cluster or namespace that we are going to be modifying and pushing API definitions to. And so in this case, this is the API URL or endpoint for controlling um, all of the elements essentially in my control plane. And then us as well, I could use um, some more granularity here to specify which environment or organization I might want to push API definitions to. So for example, if I jump back into my cockpit here, which is allowing me to manage all of my uh, environments and organizations, if you are on the newer version of the cloud, you're going to see a little bit of a different view here. Uh, but in any case, the concept of environments and organizations is the exact same. To find that information, you're going to go into the settings for your organization, and you will copy that organization ID, and then do the exact same for your um, environment that is actually attached to that organization. And so once you copy that, you go ahead and paste them here. In my case, I'm using the default environment and organization, which if you want to just get up and going really quickly, uh, you might want to do the exact same. And the last piece here, of course, to authenticate our operator to speak with our control plane. Uh, we of course don't want any unwanted guests here. We're going to be including this bearer token. Now, where you find this, very simply, if you go into your APIM console and then jump into organization and then users, you'll want to create a user and this will be a service account and you can give this any name. Um, in my case, I gave it a name called Gravity GKO. And so this service account is going to have the permission set to, of course, um, modify and push API definitions. And so if I go down 
at the very bottom of this user in my organizations within my APIM console, I'm going to generate a personal token. And this token can have a name. We're just going to call it um, February 4th, 2025 um, for us. And then I can generate this. And then ultimately we want to copy this token. Now this token is used for a variety of different things. As you can see here, um, one of the example usages here is to use this token within my uh, management API. So there of course is a different set of endpoints that we can use to interact um, with our control plane. If you are looking from a REST perspective um, in terms of um, management and optimization. However, for our operator, we're just going to copy this token here. And so we'll go in and we'll um, embed that directly in this management context file, and then we'll save this all together. And that's it. You're going to create this management-context.yaml file, and you're going to have a very similar um, 10 lines of code here. And this is coming directly from the documentation, just to make sure that we are all on the same exact page. Now, because this is in, uh, installed, we can actually go ahead and um, make sure that we are uh, doing this correctly. Let's go into the management context where I have my management context.yaml. We'll do a kubectl apply f on management context1.yaml. And once this is configured, you can see that we'll get that output letting, our, letting us know that everything is working. And now the final thing is to test this out with an API definition. So we have our YAML file. There is a whole list of different settings here that I don't want to confuse you about. And you can actually neglect a lot of this and just keep the uh, basic requirements such as your endpoint groups, right, is, is having a target um, proxy here or a URL for our backend. In this case, we're proxying to HTTP bin. We also have our keyless plan. Uh, we do not need to include things like flow execution and we don't need to include things like um, descriptions or versions um, or lifecycle state. All of these are optional um, and we can have the most basic bare minimum. Uh, to not go through all of these settings, I just want to answer one burning question that you might have now, which is where can I get a list of all of these settings to begin with? And so if I jump back into my browser and I go into the GitHub repo, and this is totally accessible, it'll also be in the description of the video. If I go to API, or sorry, if I jump into the actual link that you're going to have here, you're going to see something very similar to this. This is the reference sheet for every element that you can uh, include in your YAML files or your custom resource definitions. So in your case, you might want to see all the different elements that are exposed to you in the V4 definition. So if you jump into this, I click into that, you can see exactly what to call here. So for example, you might have a map of objects for jumping into the plans, as we can clearly see um, here, plans. Within that, we have keyless, you might have um, API tokens, you might have OAuth, you might have JWT. Uh, and then of course, all the settings can be figured out once you click into plans. Uh, you have definition version, uh, you have your description, uh, what the value type is expected, as well as a description of that value. Uh, and you can kind of figure out the rest here for yourself. So all of the reference sheet will be included to you as well. And that'll give you a pretty good understanding of, of kind of what to do here. So let's go and get to the fun part. Let me jump back um, one level in my um, directory here and we'll CD into API definitions. And let's go ahead and publish this one, echo-api.yaml. So we'll do a QCTL, apply-f on the echo file, and we'll fire that off. And you can see that this is now created. Now with my CLI, because all of this is directly in Kubernetes as different services given different names, in this case, we're calling it um, API v4 definition. So what I can actually do is I can do a QCTL, um, get API v4 definitions. And I can see that this API called API v4 is started and published. Um, so I can go into my browser. I can close this, go back to organization, APIs, and I'll search echo. And so we see that this API was just created. It's called um, API v4, which we see here. It's in the started and published lifecycle state. 
So just to do a quick modification, let's stop this API um, and we'll make sure we can unpublish this. Now what I want to do is just remind myself um, how to actually input that value. So uh, we'll jump into the reference sheet here. And if I look at uh, published, we can see that unpublished is a value for lifecycle state. And so we'll go back to our code here and put that as the value. And then just like you would with any service in Kubernetes, we'll reapply our echo-API. So now that this is applied, we'll go back into gravity. We'll refresh our APIM console. And we can see that immediately the operator has spoken with our control plane. And this API is now stopped as well as unpublished. And we can see that this is imported through Kubernetes origin. Now this API cannot be modified in the UI and that is uh, by design. We want to make sure that any API that you push to the UI via the Kubernetes operator um, absolutely can only be managed and updated through the GKO as well. All right, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to get back to you with answers. And of course, I implore you to look at the documentation here, which has all of the information that you need, as well as building out um, some more logic to what you just learned, which is things like API operations through, you know, CI CD pipelines, working with Argo CD and Jenkins. And so I encourage you to look at all this information. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.